This is Pastor Tony Kemp, and I'm wel welcoming you to this great show called uh, Good News Today. And it's a great show because we're talking about Jesus and the Word of God and the wonderful works of the Christ. We come to share with you the goodness and the greatness of God as it's revealed through His Son, Jesus. This is part four of a message entitled, The Miracles, Signs of Jesus. And so let me review some of what we've been sharing because we started out in the book of John chapter two, uh, verse 11, where it talks about this beginning of miracles Jesus did. And we talked about this whole concept of the archaic, of the, uh, of the archaic, of the, uh, the, um, this concept of uh, archetype, this beginning where it shows the original pattern from which copies are made. And so John, by the Holy Spirit, was teaching us how Jesus did miracles and how we can receive miracles or how we can minister in the area of miracles by the name, the Spirit, the Word of God, and the teaching and revelation of Jesus. And so to, to, sum, to sum that up, to begin, we started out with verse 5, okay, of John chapter 2, where here's the first instruction, whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it. Then we went on to the man that, um, who had a son that was dying, and Jesus said, go home, your son lives, and the man believes. Remember, that we're talking about the original pattern, and he does what Jesus tells him to do. So whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it. At the command of Jesus, do what you can do. Then we talked about number three, okay? The man who had been paralyzed for 30 years, and Jesus comes to him and says, rise and walk. And we said the step three to seeing the miracle signs and wonders of Jesus is you can do what you can't do when Jesus tells you to do it. So when Jesus tells you to do it, do what you can't do, and you will step into the miraculous. Okay? Whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it. Do what you can do, do what you can't do. Then we talked about how Jesus had walked on the water, and the disciples were very, very afraid because it's at night. And they've rode for, for about three, uh, three miles, and there's a great windstorm. And here comes someone walking on the water, and they think they're getting ready to die. Okay? And so, finally, Jesus says, don't be afraid. I am. And the Bible says at that point, they stopped being afraid, and they welcomed him into the ship, and immediately they reached the land where they were going. So what's step four in terms of seeing the miraculous? Do what you're afraid to do when Jesus tells you to do it. And you'll see the miraculous. We talked about the feeding of the 5,000 men plus women and children. And we talked about how Jesus made them sit down in groups of 50 and 100. In other words, we talked about how Jesus got things organized and that you have to get organized to receive the miraculous that you have to come into divine order. Psalm 119 verse 133 says, O Lord, in your word, order my steps. So when you receive the word of the Lord and you obey, you step into divine order, and after that, you see the miraculous. Does that make sense to you? Then we talked about how Jesus takes a man who was totally blind, had never seen a day in his life, anoints his eyes, right? With, uh, with spit and with, and, and, and with clay and tells the man, go find a pool called Sent. Now the man's totally blind, he's never seen. And he finds that pool and instantly he washes and he sees. And we said, do what Jesus tells you to do even if it's really difficult for you. And after that, you'll see the miraculous. We're talking about this beginning of miracles, this, this arche, this, this arte, this archetype, okay? This original pattern. And we mentioned how Jesus followed this pattern in his own life, because in John chapter five, verse uh, 19, Jesus said, as the father, uh, uh, the son can do nothing from himself, but the son can only see what he perceives his father doing. For whatever the son perceives the father is doing, uh, the son does likewise. In other words, Jesus said, this doctrine that you hear me teach doesn't come from me. It originates from the Father. So I teach 
what I've been commanded by the Father. I preach what I've been commanded by the Father. Jesus said, as the Father has commanded me, even so I do. And Jesus said, I, uh, I hear what the Father says and I do what the Father says. And uh, Jesus said, I always do those things that please the Father. So Jesus followed that pattern. Jesus would hear from the Father and obey. Jesus would see what the Father was doing and he would do what the Father was doing. Jesus was one with the Father. And Jesus said, hey, be one with me like I'm one with the Father. Jesus said in John's Gospel, chapter 15, he said, live in me and I'll live in you. Abide in me and I'll abide in you. Dwell in me, I'll dwell in you. Okay, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus said, if a man love me, he'll keep my commandments. My Father will love him, we'll come to him, we'll live with him. In other words, the key to having the presence of God is obeying Jesus. Jesus said, he who has my commandments is he it is who loves me. And he who loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I love him. And I will reveal, I'll transmit, I'll manifest myself in that person's life. And so then we talked about how Lazarus had been dead four days. He was stinking. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. Jesus brings him back to life. And we talked about do what Jesus tells you to do, even, it even if it creates a big stink. Because when Jesus resurrected Lazarus from the dead, some of the people believed in Jesus, but other people went back to the religious leaders. And man, Jesus was persecuted as a result of the miraculous. And so when you move in Jesus and Jesus does the miraculous, you may be persecuted. It may cause a big stink, but you continue to move in the signs wonders and miracles of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus also in Matthew 22, he was being challenged by some religious leaders. And um, so he corrects the religious leaders uh, through the testimony of the word of God. And in chapter 22, verse 29, Jesus says to these religious, leader, religious leaders, he says, you're mistaken in what you believe for two reasons. Number one, you don't know the scriptures. And number two, you don't know the power of God. In other words, Jesus was saying to these religious leaders, you don't know the word of God and you don't know the Holy Spirit. In other words, to walk in the truth, to walk in miracle signs and wonders, to know Jesus and to know the Father and to know the Holy Spirit, you've got to know the scriptures and you've got to know the power of God. So now this is something that I want to talk about. If you want to walk with God, you've got to know the Holy Scriptures. If you want to walk with God, you've got to know the Holy Spirit. So here's what I'm talking about. See, Jesus, okay, I'm talking about the Word of God and the Spirit of God. I'm talking about the revelation of the Word and the manifestation of God's presence and power. I'm talking about God's truth and God's glory, okay? So let me tell you what has happened in some Christian circles. There appears to have been a silent divorce between the Word of God and the Spirit of God, okay? And so we need to have a marriage where we get the Word of God and the Spirit of God back together. In other words, sometimes there is the preaching of the word, but there doesn't seem to follow any activity of the Holy Spirit. But in the ministry of Jesus, you saw both the revelation of the word and the manifestation of God's presence and power. Why? Because the original pattern is the revelation of the word produces the manifestation of God's presence, power, and glory. So in other words, Revelation produces manifestation. That's the original pattern. The Bible says in Matthew 4, 23, 24, that Jesus taught the word of God in the synagogues. Jesus preached the good news concerning the kingdom of God. That was the, those were the revelations of the word that the Father gave to Jesus. But then it says, and Jesus was healing every kind of sickness and every kind of disease among the people. Revelation produces manifestation. Jesus taught the scriptures, and then there were manifestations of the power of God. The scriptures are the keys to the signs, wonders, and miracles of Jesus, because when you act on the scriptures, it manifests the power of the Spirit.
And so we need to have a balance of the Word of God and the Holy Spirit in our lives. I need to think the Word, speak the Word, and do the Word, and I need to be led by the Spirit, I need to walk in the Spirit, I need to live in the Spirit. That's what the Bible teaches. John, uh, Joshua 1 and 8, my word which you have in writing must govern everything you say. Meditate in my word day and night. Observe to do all that is written, then you will make your way to prosper, and you will have good success. And in the book of Romans chapter 8, it says, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. And the Bible says, chapter 8, verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk after the flesh, the lower nature, but walk after the Holy Spirit, the nature of God Almighty that you receive through Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law of Moses could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did in sending his son Jesus in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, God condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law of Moses would be fulfilled in us who do not walk after the flesh, but walk after the Holy Spirit. And the apostle Paul taught in the book of Galatians chapter 5, he said, you can live in the Spirit. See, when you repent of sin, believe in Jesus, and you obey the Word of God, you speak the Word, think the Word, do the Word, now you can live in the Spirit. Paul said, walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. And in the original language, it means that the Holy Spirit has a territory. And when you walk in the Word of God, you're in the territory. You're in the realm. You're under the dominion. You're, you're located in the Spirit. And he says, get in the Spirit and stay in the Holy Spirit by just simply thinking, speaking, and doing the Word of God. So again, I want to state, it is the revelation of God's Word that brings the manifestation of God's Holy Spirit and power. Now, it is, listen, what brings the constant flow of the Holy Spirit is the continuing revelation of the Word. In other words, Simply put, the more you receive the revelation of God's Word, as you receive more and more of the Word, you receive more and more of the flow of the Spirit. Where you stop receiving the revelation of the Word is where the flow of the Spirit comes to an end. So if I only go so far in the Word, I can only go so far in the Spirit. If I continue to ascend in the Word, I will ascend in the Spirit. Okay? If I go further in the Word, I go further in the Spirit. If I go higher in the Word, I go higher in the Spirit. If I go deeper in the Word, I go deeper in the Spirit. And this reminds me of, of uh, the book of Ezekiel, where <laughs> out from the throne of God and out from the house of God, there was flowing a river, and, and uh, when you saw the river, it first started out ankle deep. That means to walk in the Spirit. Then it got knee deep. That means to pray, praise, and worship God in the Spirit. Then it got waist deep, which means now you can reproduce the will of God because you're walking in the Spirit. Then it got chest deep. Now you know the heart of God, and you follow the heart of God through Jesus. Then it got waters to swim in. It's the fullness of God. It's maturity in Jesus. Okay? It's, um, it's, uh, it's the fullness of God's presence, power, and glory. So it's very important that you have a constant flow of the Spirit by continuing revelation of the Word. In other words, don't say, I'm willing to go this far with God and no further. Okay? So here's the point. You ready? We're talking about the revelation of the Word. We're talking about the original pattern. This beginning of miracles did Jesus. Where the revelation flows, the power goes. Where the revelation of the word flows, that's where the power of God goes. Now in the book of Luke, it's, this is very interesting. It says that Jesus was in the house and the people came to hear the word and there were so many people inside the house and so many people outside the house, there was a man who had been paralyzed. And so he was, he was carried by four men, and they went up on the roof, and they dug through the roof and let the man down before Jesus. And Jesus looked at the man and said, Son, your sins are forgiven. 
Now the Bible says there were teachers of the law there and they thought Jesus had blasphemed God. Now where did, where's the, now the, the teachers of the law, okay, let me go back to the time of Babylon when the sons of Israel were taken into Babylon for 70 years. And there were teachers of the law. And what the teachers of the law did is they took the instruction of Moses, what's called the Torah, and they preserved it. The teachers of the law, they preserved it. So the teachers of the law protected and preserved the word of God for the sons of Israel. And they needed to do that in that season. But now here comes the son of God, the word of God himself. John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was, met, was made flesh. That's Jesus. God lived in the flesh of Jesus, and Jesus was God in the flesh. And so now, now, they are there in Jesus' meeting to protect and preserve the Word of God, but it's the Word of God who's speaking in front of them. Okay? And so now, now, they don't recognize who and what Jesus is. But the Bible says, as Jesus was teaching, the power of the Lord became present to heal. Notice you had the revelation of the word, and then you had the presence of God, and then you had the power of God. As Jesus was teaching, the presence of the Lord, the power of the Lord became present to heal. So where the revelation flows, the power goes. Jesus says to the man, you've been paralyzed by guilt and condemnation. Your spirit is paralyzed. Your mind is paralyzed. Your emotions are paralyzed. Your physical body is paralyzed. Your sins are forgiven. And Jesus said, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk out of your spiritual paralysis, your mental paralysis, your emotional paralysis, your physical paralysis, and the man is healed. And the people said, we have never seen this before. See, here's the point. The teachers of the law were stuck in the past. They didn't see the present move of God through the flesh of Jesus. That means that if you get stuck in the past, it can limit your ability to see God in the present. Did you hear me? You can get so stuck in your past that you can't see God moving in front of you in your present. That means you gotta let go of the past to apprehend what God is saying and doing in the present. In other words, you ready? In other words, your past can be your limit. And, and, it can prevent you from seeing God, hearing God, and experiencing God in the present. Okay? So you need to let go of the limitations of the past so that you can see the limitless presence and power of God in the present. You have to unlearn your limitations. Okay? This is very interesting to me. The, the, these teachers of the law were also upset because Jesus did this miracle on the Sabbath day, which is a day of rest. Okay? So the Sabbath day was a gift. It was a gift. Okay? This is what's interesting. They misinterpreted, they misinterpreted God's purpose for the Sabbath. Okay? So, here's what's crazy. Your gift, wrongly understood and wrongly perceived, can be your limit. Don't let your gift become your limit. Listen to me carefully. Don't let your gift become your limit when the God of glory wants to take you into the limitless power of Jesus Christ. God wants to take the limits off. Look at this. The roof that was designed for protection was preventing a man from experiencing the limitless power of God. When the four men removed the roof, they removed a limit. Mm. Jesus wants to remove the roof 
that's limiting you from experiencing the God who created the heavens. It's time for you to allow revelation to remove the roof so that you can move beyond your limitations and step into the miracle signs of Jesus Christ. Listen to me now. Listen to this. The revelation determines the manifestation. Remember, Jesus said, the son can do nothing from himself, but what he sees the father doing. Whatever the father does, the son does likewise. The book of John chapter five, verse 19. Jesus had a revelation that the father wanted to heal this man of spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical paralysis. When Jesus released the revelation, it produced the manifestation of what was in the father's heart. The revelation produces the manifestation. Without the revelation, you cannot have the manifestation. Whenever you act on the word, you activate the supernatural presence and power of God. In other words, the purpose of the written word, the Bible, is to enable you to hear the living word, the voice, the person of Jesus himself. The purpose of the written word is to bring you into an encounter with the living word, Jesus Christ. In John chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. Okay? So the word of God is the truth and the spirit of God is the glory of God. In other words, the word of God or the truth brings you into a new realm of faith. Okay, because Paul said in, John, in, in the book of Romans, chapter 10, it is the word of faith that we preach, and it's by faith that all things become possible. In other words, a new word, a new revelation brings you into, you, brings you into a new realm, and every revelation brings you into a new realm in Christ Jesus. A new revelation produces a new faith, a new faith causes a new substance, from God to be released from the supernatural throne of God into the natural and into the earth. Okay. You have to know what is being released from the throne of God to see the manifestation of his presence and power in the earth. Revelation tells you what is being released from the throne of God into the earth. It's the word of God. It's the word of God that tells you what's being released. Okay. Now. When you see what's being released from the throne of God, you frame it in time. In other words, you take what God has for you by faith and it will be manifested in the earth. Let me say it like this to you. Jesus lived a perfect life. Jesus died on a cross for your sins. Jesus was buried and resurrected. Jesus appeared to his disciples. Jesus ascended into heaven. Jesus is now seated at the right hand of God the Father. Jesus purchased every good thing the Father wants to give you. And then by the written word of God, because of what Jesus purchased, ready? God gives you what's called precious promises. Precious, to, to what Jesus purchased, the promises of Jesus, okay? But by faith, you have to take possession of what Jesus has purchased by applying the promises through faith, okay? So now let's look, at, let's look at what's going on. The word of God, the word of God is the revelation of what Jesus has purchased. The word of God is the revelation of Jesus' promises. The word of God is the revelation of what you must do. Whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it so that you can apprehend get a hold of, capture, take possession of the promises of God so there can be a supernatural provision. I want to say that again. You take possession of what Jesus has purchased by obeying the word of God, getting a hold of the promises, and then you see the provision of Jesus Christ. But now, the throne of God, the throne of God has sent Jesus to purchase, to promise, to provide. But if you miss what the throne of God is releasing, 
the window for manifestation is closed and must be brought back and reopened by an application of the Word of God, as well as through praise, thanksgiving, and worship. Now, as we worship the living Word, the Lord Jesus, we open heaven, and there comes this cloud of glory, okay? Now listen, miracles are in this cloud of glory. What is in the cloud of glory is what you're believing God for, that Jesus has purchased, that he has promised, that he provides when you put application to the word. In other words, miracles are in the realm of glory. That's God's person, and that's who and what God is. So as people worship, the atmosphere of heaven surrounds them, becomes heavier and heavier. And as the atmosphere of glory thick, thick, thickens, you believe what is in the cloud. Remember, the Bible says that Jesus comes on a cloud, okay? And out of the cloud, of his glory, of his presence, miracles take place. You remember the concept of the cloud. When the sons of Israel were delivered in the book of Exodus chapter 14, from slavery after being there 400 years in the ministry of Moses, there was a cloud by day. And the Bible says that the Lord looked through the cloud, okay? So we're talking about the cloud of glory, okay? So unless we speak, nothing will manifest from that place of glory. But when we respond in obedience to the word and speak, the miracle will come into manifestation. Now, here's what I want to say to you, and this is very, very important. Miracles are for your crisis. Christ is for your crisis. A crisis is something that you either cannot understand or you cannot control that disrupts your life and interrupts the normal course of life and it tempts you to take your eyes off of Christ. So when you turn your eyes upon Christ, Christ intervenes and he puts a stop to your crisis. He subdues your crisis. Christ conquers your crisis. Christ causes you to overcome your crisis. Christ causes you to have victory over your crisis. And he begins to bring things into a new normal for God's glory, for your good, and the good of others. Let me close by saying this. What is the glory of God? In the context in which I'm speaking, it is the manifestation of the person, the presence, and the power of Jesus Christ. The glory of God is the love and the person of Jesus Christ. Receive that love right now and experience miracles, signs, and wonders through the Lord Jesus. May God bless you richly today. Oh,